I was on the swings, observing a spider crafting its web. The new day was just minutes away. The spider had selected the base of a children's slide in the local park as its construction site. It moved back and forth across the slide's entry point. I was struck by the intricate web, a marvel created overnight. The spider must have had a strategy, it worked once and ensured a feast for itself. Sure, there might be flaws in its plan, but no risk, no reward, right? I'm rooting for it. My own plan might be just as far-fetched, but I have one too. Only the spiders and crickets heard my words. Today was Monday, the start of my plan. If all goes well, by tonight we'll witness the final domino fall. I'm Blake Fall. I married Sean shortly after graduating from the University of Michigan. We both found jobs in the Detroit suburbs. Our history was rather uneventful, typical college romance with its ups and downs. I have a tendency toward insecurity and jealousy, which sometimes makes me harsh toward Sean if I disapprove of her appearance or behavior in public. I've been known to lash out at her in front of others. Not that she's unaware, we've had countless conversations about our actions and their consequences. Despite my flaws, Sean agreed to marry me. No problems there, right? Sean and I are avid shooters. We've taken all the courses, defensive pistol courses, raw basic pistol course, and the courses required for a concealed carry permit. We compete in shooting tournaments at indoor ranges. Sean has won the Annie Oakley Award for Best Female Shooter more than once. I'm not as good, but not as bad as to not enjoy it. The suburbs of Detroit mostly have great living areas. There are a few where it's easier knowing she's armed and vigilant. We still attend a lot of games, football, basketball, and baseball. In high school, I played all three sports, but in college, I focused on academics. I wasn't talented enough to compete at the university level. Last Thursday, it was going to take forever to get home. I perked up as Greg, my colleague, slammed his fist on the table. How do you know, Greg? I asked. I'm looking at the traffic camera at the intersection of Highway 7 and 82. There's a pickup on its side and, on top of it, a car. There's no way they'll clear that tonight. It's a sight. I walked over to Greg's office and looked at the screen. My stomach twisted. Beside the paramedics, her head wrapped in gauze, was Sean, at least I think it's her. She has a very distinctive tattoo on her left arm from shoulder to wrist. The people on the camera were too small to confirm my suspicions. Apparently, her flight to Chicago yesterday left without her. The overturned truck seemed familiar to me. Can you get shots of this accident? What are you looking for? Greg asked. I think I recognize that truck. I need to dig into my memory banks, but I know it's familiar. Greg recorded and emailed me the footage. After zooming in, I'm almost certain it's Sean. Yesterday's phone call was complete nonsense, smooth flight, nice room, meetings went well. Miss you. Tomorrow is a tough day. Late flight, don't wait up. On the way home, I was completely distracted. How did they make a fool out of me? How do I know that truck? No clue. The blue and yellow stripes on the truck haunted me. Sean called around seven in the evening. Hi, baby. Bad news. My taxi to the airport got into an accident. I'm okay, but I have a deep cut on my forehead. Long story short, I missed my flight. I'll let you know when I land. Love you. Call me. My heart hasn't stopped racing since I first saw that photo. Betrayal clenches my stomach. Flames roar in my ears. No matter how hard I tried, I couldn't eat. Unfolding emotions were killing me. Realizing my marriage was a lie, I wanted revenge on both Sean and her lover. I spent the next few hours searching the house, trying to find something, not knowing what I was looking for. The disappointing, boiling rage fueled my search. Nothing caught my attention next. I checked the credit card statements. Since Shona travels at least twice a month, I figured there would be some clues in her purchases. In a way, I was right. 
Comparing her trips with credit card usage every other month, I found that on one of the trips, there was no credit card activity. These trips only had a parking fee at the airport as the sole charge. She uses her business credit card for tickets, hotels, and trips, everything else goes on her personal card, and she submits expense reports. Should I believe she paid cash or just didn't need on those trips? What I saw on the traffic camera made it clear she was taking two-day vacations with her lover under the guise of a trip. I needed to find out who it was. It wasn't that hard, I'll request a copy of the accident report. Shona keeps a filing cabinet with her important papers. I wondered if her expense documents were somewhere in there. She's so organized it took only a few minutes to find the right folder and another minute to confirm that the trips without credit card usage weren't recorded on her expense account. I wanted a drink but knew better. Does the duration even matter? Not quite. Cold, calculating betrayal. My revenge will match the depth of her deception. In divorce, I'll be fair given my options, she'll get her 50%. A prenup, yes indeed, she'll get her 50%. Sleep came slowly, and coffee took longer to kick my brain into gear in the mornings. When I turned on my phone, there was a message from Shona saying she'd be home later today. I headed to work without calling back. Digging through divorce advice online, I checked our joint accounts. I'll need to open an account in just my name with the brokerage account. It was a bit trickier, positions couldn't be moved, so I sold enough to reach the 50% mark. I'll return and transfer my half when the time comes. Not wanting to risk it, I didn't tell any of my friends, family, or colleagues about the impending divorce. At lunch, I got a copy of the police. Report on the accident. Now there's no doubt she's listed as a passenger in the pickup truck. I didn't recognize the truck owner's name, Ray Stronzo. I still wondered how I'd know that truck. At least I had her lover's address. It was three blocks from where we lived. A quick online check yielded an address record. The lover co-owned it with Jill Stronzo, probably his wife. Other web pages I found gave some personal info about both Ray and Jill. It looks like they all went to school together with Shona. When Shona called at the end of the workday, I decided it was best to answer or she'd know something was up. You're back. I've been trying to reach you since yesterday evening. Is everything okay? I found out my phone was off this morning and again around noon. I should check it out. How was your trip? Everything was fine until the taxi ride. I'll have to put on makeup to cover the cut on my forehead. Want to invite a girl for dinner? Of course, though I'm not very hungry. Pick a place and I'll meet you there. I made the long drive to the restaurant, passing by the Stronzo residence. I didn't see the truck parked outside. A flag hung from the porch, and it clicked, a Michigan University flag. That's the truck we see at Michigan football games in Ann Arbor. That's why it has blue and yellow stripes. During dinner, I tried, really tried, to look normal but Shona sensed something was off. Is something bothering you, Blake? You seem very distracted today. I have a lot on my mind. Don't worry about it. As Shona began her nightly makeup routine, I climbed into bed and pretended to be asleep. In the morning, as I left for work, Shona was still asleep. I rummaged through her car and found a cell phone hidden in the back seat cushions. Turning it on and scrolling through texts confirmed that Shona and Ray had been at this for months, if not longer. Well, I don't know what your punishment will be, but you'll pay for this. I'm not one for confrontation. I can't imagine doing anything physical to them both. It required creative thinking. I decided meeting with a lawyer would disrupt my plan. I was utterly stunned upon learning about her affair. If my plan is to succeed I'll have to act quickly to protect what I can. I bought what I needed and spent the weekend avoiding Shona. She wanted to make love on Saturday, but I declined and fell asleep. She tried again on Sunday evening. We lay in silence, disappointed. She gave up, and we fell asleep. I got up early on Monday morning and spent some time in the park. I needed to make sure I was on the right path, the one I truly wanted to take. Shona's Dilemma
I thought I had everything under control until that phone call. Monday mornings are always tense at work, I answer several calls per hour. My office phone rang. The caller ID showed private. This is Shona. I know what you're doing with Ree. I want in. The quiet voice belonged to a man. It had an irritatingly high, nasal tone. He hung up before I could respond. My mind raced. I'd been exposed. The rest of the day and the entire evening, I wasn't myself. One of our nightly rituals was a cup of hot tea, it seemed to relax both of us. Blake always drinks it before bed. Blake seemed concerned. Are you sure everything's okay with you? You're acting like something's bothering you. I'm fine, just something at work is bothering me. I need to think about other things. Do you know anything that could occupy a girl for a while? I wanted to say we made love, but it didn't feel like love. I concluded that they weren't going to talk to me. I'd wait and see what happens. Nightmares haunted me about Blake finding out. Reflections convinced me not to see Ray anymore. This is Shona, the same voice as before. Ready to come and please me? No, I hung up. Less than a minute later. This is Shona. You both snore. Last night you wore a tank top with a blue teddy bear. You sleep on the right side of the bed. I took a picture of you. I doubt he heard my sigh as I hung up after his statement. When I found my car after work, a small envelope was pinned under the windshield wiper. I cried for thirty minutes after seeing the picture of myself taken last night. He was in my bedroom. I felt violated. What had I gotten myself into? That evening at home, I focused on paying bills and organizing receipts. How did he sneak in here in the middle of the night? Is he Ray's friend? Is this Ray's enemy? That voice is unfamiliar to me. I would remember that annoying sound. Blake, do you think we can lock the outside doors? I think so. What made you bring that up? I just heard about recent break-ins. I don't want anyone getting into our home while we're here. I'll add it to the to-do list. I didn't sleep well. Every little creak the house made frightened me. In the morning, I struggled to pull myself together. My nightmare continued. This is Shona. Nice pajamas last night. Ready to be my woman? Who are you? What do you want? You know what I want. Yours or mine. Come to my place. I'll destroy you. There was no response. I asked for and got a two-hour lunch break. I was in complete disarray. Who can I turn to? I kept my affair with Ray a secret from everyone. That's wrong, isn't it? Except from everyone, at least one stalker. Blake and I made love again. Now I wonder if he knows anything. I was so consumed by Ray that I probably missed out on my own personal life at home. Lack of sleep is starting to catch up with me. Blake, I think I'm getting sick. I'll sleep in the guest bedroom so you won't catch anything. No, no, no. I like the firmness of the guest bedroom's bed. I'll sleep there. Blake, I've been having nightmares. I'll keep a gun with me at night. Warn me before entering the bedroom. Will do. I don't need Annie Oakley pulling a number on me. Why don't I add a handle to the bedroom door? I'll put it on the to-do list. Sleep tight. Now I'm really curious if Blake knows anything. What's with the sleep tight? He always used to end his goodbyes with love you. When was the last time I heard love you? After Blake went to the guest bedroom, I pulled a chair up to my bedroom door. I placed some trinkets on the windowsill and tucked the gun under Blake's pillow. Hopefully, if my stalker shows up tonight, he'll make enough noise to wake me, and I'll destroy him. This is Shona. Well, I dropped by but no one destroyed me. Beautiful trinkets, I took a few of them. Blake is in another room. Maybe I can disable him, then you and I can have some fun. Then you and I can have some fun. The headboard of the bed should be perfect for handcuffs. He hung up before I could react. I rushed home for lunch and noticed three trinkets were missing. 
I dashed to my bathroom. What have I gotten myself into? If I go to the police, Blake will find out about my affair. What choice do I have? I have to tell someone, I'm not going to be a target for some fool. Re wanted to meet tonight, but I declined. I have a disposable phone that I keep in the car, and I use it to communicate with Re. I told him we need to cool off for now. His texts indicated he wasn't happy with this decision. I don't know if this guy found me following Re. I'm so scared and confused. Should I just go along with his offer? Where is this going to end? Maybe I should tell Blake and ask for his help. My poor performance at work was noticed by my immediate boss. I got the standard pep talk. It's so awkward, I've never needed this before. Heading to his office, I felt his gaze on me and heard giggles. I cried for a whole hour before Blake returned home. I freshened up and put on some fresh makeup before joining him for dinner. Hanging a few bells on the window and door, I felt a little calmer. Try sneaking in now. On Friday morning, I tried my hardest to be productive, but that lasted only until his call. This is Shauna. Very cute with the bells. You got me a little excited for a minute, but you slept through it all. Did you see that I unloaded your gun and left the bullets on the windowsill? I returned your trinkets too. I need Blake, I can't do this alone. If I tell him, I'll still have to do it alone. What a mess. The weekend isn't coming soon enough, at least he won't torment me at work. What if he's planning something for me this weekend? Blake was completely happy avoiding me since the trip was planned for next Wednesday. I didn't know whether to agree or cancel. When is this guy coming for me? Is he so sick that he needs to follow me on the road? Blake was fast asleep when I finished showering on Saturday morning. He never sleeps in late. I shook him several times before he came to. He sat up and looked at me somewhat puzzled. Oh wow, am I not myself today? Almost nine. Are you feeling okay? Rubbing his neck, he flinched. I looked and saw a spider bite or something similar on his neck. It looks like you got bitten. Let me get you a plaster. The rest of the morning was filled with the usual weekend chores. Around lunchtime, Blake went out to get Jamba Juice. My cell phone rang, and the caller ID was private. My mom hides all her calls, so I answered. Hi. I tried the sleeping pill on Blake last night. Since he's alive, I think we can move forward. I hung up. I was shaking, my legs felt weak. No matter how hard I tried, I couldn't hold back my stomach. I sprayed half a bottle of deodorant to cover all traces. I have to tell Blake, I can't continue like this. I can't tell Blake. I'm so tangled up. Why did I even do this? My head was spinning. All this drama for what? This isn't love. Ree was never that great of a lover, not even in high school. What was I thinking getting involved with him? Sunday wasn't any better than Saturday. Every time the phone rang, my blood pressure spiked. When I answered the private call, he was there again. Hi. Time's up, Shauna. Next time you're alone, you'll be mine. And the line went dead before I could respond. I was sweating and trembling. Sooner or later, I'll be alone in the house. I can't take it anymore. The day dragged on. I nervously watched the clock. I didn't feel like sleeping today. Just before bedtime, my world turned upside down. I need to run back to the office. I won't be gone for more than 90 minutes. Please don't go. Blake, can't this wait until morning? I'll be gone just for a little while. We'll see each other soon. I made sure all doors and windows were locked, closing the bedroom door and hanging up wind chimes. I sat on the bed with the lights on, grabbing the gun from under the pillow. I checked the magazine and made sure it was loaded. My heart raced, and I panicked when I heard the floor creak. I hesitated, pointing the gun at the door and window. When the doorbell rang, I shot. I heard a sound and shot again and again and again. The door swung open, and a person dressed in black fell face down. I was shaking and looked down to see that I had wet the bed. 
I was shaking so much that I could barely use my phone. What happened? I had just killed someone in my house. I have a gun, I'm scared to go near him. Try to stay calm, ma'am. Can you give me your address? Five minutes later, although it felt like hours had passed, the first patrol car arrived. A minute later, the ambulance and several paramedics arrived. Within half an hour, the place was swarming with police. I wanted Blake, I needed Blake. Where was Blake? In our state, there's the do-it-yourself law. For uninvited guests in your home, dispose of them as you see fit. If an uninvited guest dies, the case is closed. The paramedics quickly took the man to the hospital. He was alive. Blake was sitting and waiting. I told Shauna I was going to the office. In the garage, I put on gloves, found Shauna's disposable phone in her car, copied the message that angered me earlier, and sent it to Ree. It hadn't changed, just like months ago, the timestamp was almost identical to back then. I put her phone back where I found it. I turned onto her street and waited until the only light in her bedroom came on. I had to wait only a few minutes. I returned and unlocked the front door, hurried away, and soon found myself in my office. We have many surveillance cameras, and I need my access card to get through the gates into the building and then to my office. I turned on the computer but just sat there contemplating, will this really work? Once I devised my plan, I bought a disposable phone and downloaded a voice masking app. I sensed panic in Shauna's behavior that first night home. Every night, I put a sleeping pill in Shauna's tea. By getting into bed, she'd pass out. That first night, I turned her to get a good picture and printed it on our printer. The panic in her voice on the second day was exactly what I was hoping for. Every night she was unconscious, so I could make a lot of noise and she wouldn't move. On Friday night, around 3 a.m., I stood and pricked my scalp with an English pen. I contacted the text written a few months ago that infuriated me, he just left for the office. Come to me, you don't have much time. Here's the translation of your text into English, maintaining its meaning and style. I figured it was time for me to go home. In about an hour, or when the police called, an hour meant the plan didn't work, the police would mean success. My cell phone rang. This is Blake. Mr. F.O., who's this? Sir, this is Sergeant Willis. There's been a shooting at your house. Your wife is unharmed, although quite shaken. Can you come home and comfort her? I'm on my way already. I'll be there in ten minutes. Who doesn't love it when a plan comes together? Arriving home, I found the area flooded with red and blue flashing lights. Passing the guards, I entered my house. Seeing me, Shauna jumped to her feet, hugged me tightly, and started sobbing. Detective Sampson sat opposite us. Mrs. F.O., an uninvited guest by the name of Ray Strong is calling himself. Do you know him? Oh my God, no. Blake, I'm so sorry. Oh God. She broke down in tears. Excuse me, detective. My wife is clearly upset by all of this. Give her a minute to compose herself. All right, let's try this again. You seem to know Ray Strong, don't you? We went to high school together. Around that time, an officer patted Detective Sampson on the shoulder and whispered something in his ear. He got up and left the room for a moment. I did my best to look shocked when he returned and started speaking. Mrs. F.O., I'm going to have to take you in for questioning. Officer, please handcuff her. Shauna F.O., you have the right to remain silent. What's happening, Detective? We found his cell phone. Your wife invited him over tonight. We need to get to the bottom of this. What's happening? How could you, Blake? I didn't do anything like that. Please don't leave. I need you. I walked out of the house without looking back. That's all. I could hardly keep from smirking as I watched from the driveway while they took Sean away. She kept pleading, help me, Blake, please help me. It was only a matter of time before they found your phone and the message you sent inviting Ray over. I made sure they locked up the house after the yellow tape went up. 
I spent the night in a motel. Even the most outrageous plans have a chance of working out. Shauna used her one call to involve her parents. The police got a warrant and found Shauna's burner phone with a history of these burners talking and texting each other. It didn't look good for Shauna. My initial step was to initiate divorce proceedings. I thoroughly reviewed and documented our finances. Shauna will receive her 50%, but I won't be responsible for her legal fees. I withdrew 50% in cash from our joint accounts, opened a new account in my name only, and redirected my direct deposit to this new account. The brokerage account was straightforward since half of it was in cash. The divorce lawyer took care of everything before Ree could take any legal action, which was a relief. He reassured me that once the yellow tape was removed, I collected all of Shauna's belongings and delivered them to her parents' home. I hired professionals to clean the house, and my lawyer accompanied me to the sole police interrogation I was invited to. Shauna tried to convince the authorities that I had set her up, claiming she hadn't sent that final message. When they reviewed the tower data from her phones, it corroborated my account, confirming their suspicion that she was the criminal. Out of the five shots fired, only two hit the target. I suppose that's acceptable, though I was hoping for better results from all my gun training. I observed from the gallery as Shauna defended herself. Despite being pursued, she never disclosed her affair or that she hadn't sent the message. She insisted, my husband must have known and set me up. The press picked up on her plea deal, and her overconfidence in handling the situation ultimately led to her downfall. She was found guilty and sentenced to 20 years. I didn't wait for the divorce to start seeing other people. There are many who are eager to support a husband when his wife is incarcerated. Shauna's resources were quickly depleted in her fight for freedom. I wasn't financially liable, and even if Ree tried to sue, there were no significant joint assets. Paying for a lawyer just for the sake of a moral victory didn't make sense, so no trial occurred. I could use some help managing feelings of jealousy.